So yeah, my name is uh, Seech Su, and uh, I've been dancing seriously since 90, 1996. I started off with, as an electrical engineer. I worked at a large firm. It was called uh, Northern Telecom. It's like a telecom company of a, a um, Canadian company. And as I was working there, I found that the corporate life wasn't really what I imagined it to be. At the same time, I wanted to do something other than just uh, work. I started looking for um, something else. Somebody introduced me to uh, this guy named Gary Kendall. He was out of uh, Santa Cruz at the time. Didn't really seek him out because it was kind of far. I lived in Santa, Santa Clara at the time. Uh, one day, somebody told me that he had a class in Santa Clara. So I visited him, I saw the class. I thought it was amazing. I loved it because I called around. At the time, there was no, no, nobody around here that was teaching classes. I looked at dance schools uh, through the phone book, yellow, you know, the yellow book and everything. Nobody, nobody taught. But uh, I was able to find him. I, I thought I was very lucky. So um, fast forward a few years, um, we hooked up with Randy. Now as a friend, but at the time, um, Randy and Gary knew each other. Um, they were they were jugheads back uh, years back. Then we hooked up with all the guys from Jedi and Mind Tricks. So I was kind of like adopted, you know, to be part of the group. Uh, it, was, it was a quick family. It was a dance family. Immediately, uh, I felt connected, you know, to, to this dance. Moving forward a little bit, Randy, Gary, and myself, we uh, um, auditioned for Culture Shock. Gary actually read audition because he was actually part of the first year uh, first year culture shock. I think I want to say '93 or something like that. But then in '96, I believe it was '96, Gary, Randy, and myself got into culture shock, and at the time it was San Francisco. Uh, I, I believe it's Oakland now. And from there, I remember in '99, Jam on the Groove, which was the, the headline was. Um, to me, it was uh, Mr. Wiggles. And deep down inside, I really wanted to pop, but nobody here uh, taught popping. I want to say back then, there was definitely no YouTube, no video cameras. You were very, very lucky if you had a VHS tape of somebody. That's why in the 80s, if anybody wanted to dance, you got to have either photographic memory or uncle or cousin or a close friend that's going to, be, that's going to help. You. Because if you're kind of mediocre about trying to learn it, you're not going to learn it. It's very discouraging because uh, just such few resources. And I think the advantage of that is people don't take things for granted because it's so rare, you know? You don't just look outside or you don't just log on a computer and then bam, there you have it, you know, some awesome dancers. So if you, if you do see one, you're just like, wow. So what I was saying is back then, you really got to be good. Also, the culture back then was way different from what it is now. It's um, a lot tougher. The philosophy back then was don't bite my style, don't bite my name, don't bite the way I, look, I dress. If I have a FUBU jean, you better not be wearing the same one because I'm going to kick your ass kind of thing. It was very competitive. It's almost violent. It's, so it, was, um, it wasn't a very welcoming community back then, but it was very glamorous. So it was kind of like ghetto celebrity, if you will. To me, right now, looking back at it, it wasn't for the weak of heart. Does that make sense? What I love about community now is the dancers that kind of survived back then. We knew how it was back then. We kind of want to change it. We knew how tough it was. So now the community is more nurturing, you know. 
Uh, we want to be more supportive of anybody that wants to learn it. Because back then, if you want to learn it, it doesn't matter. You cannot bite this, bite that, whatever. You know, and, and most of the dancers now are aware that that terminology, biting, is actually, there's, there's, to me, there's two meanings. One is plagiarism. And that's a definite no-no. I don't think anybody would say plagiarize something is, is a good thing. That's not a good thing. But biting in the sense that you're copying or trying to learn something. So for example, if a person doing a head spin, the first person that did the head spin, if anybody else did the head spin, then what's that person gonna say? You can't do a head spin because I did it first? It doesn't make sense. Because the, the, the breaking community wouldn't grow from there. Same with all the other styles. So just because one group did something or one person did something, now the community is like, okay, go ahead, learn it, but create more from it, inspire other people's from it. I think now um, with the philosophy change and also with the internet, YouTube, um, this is uh, growing at such a rapid pace that uh, to me it's great but we do lose the sense of that preciousness because back then it was so precious, you know, and, and that's one thing that I kind of uh, don't like about some of the dancers or newcomers today because they take it for granted, you know. It's like, uh, it's like if you're a kid that grew up, grew up without a lot of stuff and you see somebody now growing up with, it's almost like they're being spoiled, you kind of feel like, dang, these guys are spoiled, you know? And that's what I see um, but then I do see great dancers coming out of um, you know today's environment as well, and they they don't take it for granted. So it's it's, it's such a pleasure to see those kind of kids. So hopefully this will go out and educate some more people to really understand where where the things come from. We take our street dance, we take our classical dance, we just say dance. What is dance? I want to recall um, my big brother, my mentor, my hero, Skeeter Rabbit. What he defined popping, I defined just dance. He says popping is the freedom of expression done to the rhythm of the music. That's how he defined popping. And I believe that's the definition of just dance. When you can express yourself to the rhythm of the music, and it has to be the rhythm of the music, it has to be music. And it has to be expression. That's dance. I had ballet dancers or modern dancers in my class, and I think we had this, this discussion. And somebody said, "Well, tree is dance," and that went past me because I, I did not agree. There was no music, unless there is some sort of wind music that goes, some some sort of a you know. And the, and, the, and the tree is blowing to the wind with it, then I could see how that is dance. But if it's just here, and over time it grows, and that has movement over a long time, and you just say movement is dance, I do not agree. But I can respect what other people are saying. But personally, I believe dancing has to be done to the rhythm of the music. And it is expression. It is you um, expressing what you're either feeling or what your body wants to do. Choreography versus freestyle and stuff like that. To me, it's not a versus thing. It's one aspect of dance and another aspect of dance. Analogy that I would give is if you are an artist, if you're a painter, sculptor, whatever it is, and if you're trying to learn from somebody who's a painter, and that painter teacher says, okay, today or this month, we're gonna draw this drawing that I drew last week, okay? So everybody trace this thing. That's, the kind, that's kind of like the analogy that I would give. A lot of dance teachers, so-called choreographers, they choreograph, they make up their stuff. Maybe the week before, the day before, two days before, whatever it is. And I have to admit, I did that when I first started teaching because I didn't understand how to teach people to truly freestyle. 
Maybe because I, myself, truly did not know how to truly freestyle. But I knew what I was taught, and what I was taught was a bunch of choreographies. But I also knew back then that I can't just teach the choreography that I learned, because that's just reteaching what somebody else taught. That's like a rehearsal. It's not teaching. Dance is a social thing. Do not hide yourself in your garage, your bedroom, your studio, and try to come up with choreography, you know, and never go out. And when you do go out, talk to people, meet other dancers, you know, um, learn about each other. To me, dancing is such a tool for us to um, socialize. You know, without dance, obviously, I wouldn't have you guys here uh, or get to meet you, okay? Um, it, is, it, it is a tool, and ultimately, I think everybody wants to be happy. Attitude is, is, is so important, not just in dance, in, in any aspect of life. For anybody that studies a little bit on self-development, you know that attitude is so important. Especially in dance, you know that your confidence and attitude and confidence are very much related. When you're confident, your dance is so much better. It doesn't matter if you're freestyling or if you're doing choreography. If you're so confident that you're doing good, you look it. You know, you dance how you feel, yeah? You feel confident, your mood's gonna come out better, sharper, stronger. You know, just that confidence will exude in your movement. That goes with your attitude. 100% attitude is, is uh, very, very important. It's the key. It's the key to performing. It's the key to learning. I hope that we can make each other better by being honest with each other. You know, same thing, like, you know, there's nothing to do with dance. You and I go to, go to a club or something, and your breath stinks, right? If you, I'm a true friend, I would say, hey man, your breath stinks. Don't get mad because I told you your breath stinks. Just go brush your teeth or put a mint on, that's it. Now we're happy, right? Many times we get so caught up in the in, in that feeling of my breast thinks, oh man, man, how can you say that to me? <laughs> it's the same idea. Now you could be nice about it. You're gonna be like, man, you breast things, man. Get the, f you know, like you know, you don't say it that way, but be a nice person about it. So that's what we call tact. How to be gracious about it. But if you say it in such a way that it comes out as, as an attack, then people lose the message. They focus on the way you treated them with that message. So again, nothing to do with dance, it's how you are as a person. Learn how to be respectful to each other, okay? When you do that, your dance is gonna go way high. You're gonna live a much uh, healthier, uh, happier life, okay? And you're gonna make the people around you happier too.